Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll see how to create a cool magazine style layout for your post loops using the Elementor Loop Grid widget. As a bonus, you'll also learn how to add dynamic background colors to your category badges. The benefit of this layout is that it allows your users to focus on one topic first before focusing on other items so you don't want to overwhelm them with too much information at once, give them one item first which is the most important item and then they have other items that they can look through once they've seen the first item. So without any further ado, let's get started. On our WordPress dashboard, the first thing we need are our posts and then we need to assign categories to those posts. The next thing we need to ensure is that we have Elementor Pro installed so that we can have access to the loop grid widget as well as the dynamic tags. Then we need a way to add the background color meta field to our categories. In a previous video, I showed you how to use ACF to add the dynamic background color. But in this video, I'll be using Jet Engine. So under Jet Engine, Meta Boxes, I've created a Meta Box and I've assigned it to the category taxonomy. And the only Meta field is the color picker field. So when you go back over to your post, then categories, and then you try to edit one of the categories, you notice that there is a label background color and we need to take note of this name which is label bg color all hyphen in between them that's what we're going to be using later on and for this tutorial i'll be using the flexbox and the grid container so make sure under elementor settings and features you have both the grid container as well as the flexbox container set to active then we can save it we can now head over to the elementor edit page to start building out the loop so here we are on the elementor edit page my screen might look slightly different from yours but that's because i'm using the elementor top bar experiment but everything should work the same regardless of how your screen looks like so we'll start with the first method which involves creating two separate loops. So go ahead and add in your loop grid widget into a new container. Then duplicate it. So right click and duplicate. So we have two loop grids. Then now to align them side by side, you can use the flex box, but in this tutorial, I'll just go to use the grid because it's very simple. So on the parent container, the container layout, just change it from flexbox to grid. Then we'll check the columns, set it to two. That's two FR. The rows, let's change it to the pencil icon and say we want it to be auto. So we can add in as many rows as we want. It's not limited to just one row. So now that we have that, we can turn off the grid outline. We don't need it and then we can save it so now that we have our first layout intact now let's go ahead and add in our templates so for the first loop grid let's go ahead and create a new template you can save it before you start editing the template the first thing i like to do is to rename the templates so that it's easy to manage and it is well organized so if you have the top bar experiment active you can go over to the top center of your screen. You see this cog icon, which says loop item settings. But if you are not using the top bar experiment, then the cog icon should be at the bottom left of your screen. You see a cog icon there. So you just go ahead and click it. Then to open up the loop item settings, then you can now rename it to whatever you want. For this example, I'll just name it mag featured loop template. So it's easy for me to remember then publish it now we can start adding our widgets so first i'll start with the featured image so go over to the plus icon and then i'll just drop in a featured image 
some people might be wondering why I'm using the featured image rather than just using a background image on the container itself. The reason is that I want to take advantage of the width and height of the image, especially when we are going into the mobile view. If we use it as a background image, there will be no width and height assigned, so it will shrink. But if we use it as an image, then when it gets to mobile, it takes on the width and height of the image itself. So now let's click on the wrench icon so we can add in a fallback image for when we don't have an image on the post. So I'm just going to choose a random image. Just pick this one, select it. Then under the style tab, set the width to 100% and the height from pixel change it to percentage and we set it to 100% as well. Next, the object fit, set it to cover and then we leave the object position as center center. So what this will do is that it will make the image to stretch to fit the width and height of the container as the container grows. But then when the container shrinks, it takes on the width and height of the image itself. So that's a nice compromise. Now that we have that, we might also want to add in a CSS filter so that we can darken the image because a light text will not be able to show clearly on this image. So go to the CSS filters, click on the pencil icon, and then we just drop the brightness a bit so that whenever we add a text, it will be quite legible. So let me just set it to maybe like a 61 or something. You can go more specific in the numbers, but I'm just doing random numbers right now. Then there's a little bit of space around because of the padding. So let's go to the container. We'll set the content width to full width. Then the padding under the advanced tab, set it to zero. And I like to set the parent container of the loop to also have the HTML tag. So under the layout, additional options, we we'll change the HTML tag to article. We we'll give it some semantic meaning. Now let's publish it. So we have have our first step done. Now the next step is to add in another container where we we'll put in all our content. So go to the plus icon again, and then this time we'll add in a container. We we'll set it to full width. Then I'll set the direction to column because all the items will be going in one direction that is just stacked vertically. So we just use the column. So let's go back to the design. We'll see from the design, what we need are a heading widget, then we need the post title, then we need the post info for the author as well as the date. So we just need three extra widgets. So let's start, we we'll add the plus icon, say we want a heading widget, then the post title, and finally, we want the post info widget. Now let's get rid of the time as well as the comments. We don't need those. But you notice that it's a bit squashed at the moment because it's taking up just a little space. So let's publish it. Save and back. Then we only want one. So let's just change it from the columns from three. Say we set it to one column and then items per page is just going to be one. So now we have it, it's now more legible. So let's publish it and go back to continue editing it. We want the image and the text to overlap, but at the moment, the image and the text are not overlapping. I'll show you a neat trick to get them to overlap. We don't need any sort of hacky negative margin or transform or even absolute positioning, but all we need is the CSS grid. So how do we do that? Go over to the parent container again, then change the layout from Flexbox to Grid. Don't worry about how it looks at the moment. We'll disable the outline. We'll set the columns to 1FR and the rows to 1FR as well. Finally, let's go over to the Advanced tab. Then under Custom CSS, all you have to write is selector, then the greater than sign, 
and then we'll say div and we'll say grid area start with one slash one slash minus one slash minus one and that's it you see now both of them are overlapping each other and that's how easy it is to overlap an image with a container so we don't need to do a background image anymore you can use an actual image and it will give you the added advantage of having that alt tag for your images as well as the width and height of the image will also be put into consideration so now let's go ahead and style all the texts so that they can be legible and smaller so first the heading widget will give it the dynamic tag of post terms then we'll click on the wrench icon so we can choose the taxonomy but for now it's not showing anything so let's just publish it and then refresh the page now when we go back to the heading widget and we'll click on the wrench icon again it now shows the taxonomy correctly so we want the categories we don't want it to be linked so let's just unlink it then under the style tab i want to give it a text color of white and I want the size to be a bit smaller. You can use rems, but in this case, I'm going to be using some CSS variables I already defined by myself. So don't worry about what is written there. I just want a small font size. So then we'll go over to the next one, which is the post title. Same thing, I just want to change the tag to maybe an H2 in this case because we only have an h1 which is the magazine style the title then this can be an h2 then i'll change the style the color as well i'll give it the same color white then i'll reduce the font size a bit the next is the, the post info so let's go to that as well I don't want any of them to be linked, so I'll just unlink them. Then I'll go over the style tab. Then the icon first, give it the color, white. Then the text, give it the same color. And finally, the font size for the typography. I'll just give it a small font size, so maybe the base font. So now we have that. Maybe I'll increase the text to be a bigger font size. So yeah, we have that. Normally, I like the post title to be the first item in a post loop. So we're just going to do some rearrangement. First, I'll use the navigator to drag the post title to the top of its container. Don't worry. You can just go back to the heading. Under the advanced tab, you see where it says order. Just set it back. To start so visually it's at the top but in the html structure the post title comes first then to go further i'll move the container up as well above the image but immediately i do that the content disappears that's because like in editing softwares whatever is at the bottom has the higher stacking order so if you want to change the stacking order go to the container the advanced tab and then just set a z index so we just set a Z index of, could just be even one, and immediately it comes back to the top. Finally, we want to give a space between the category and the post title. So click on the post title, and then the advanced tab, and we'll use margin top of auto. So we'll go over to the custom CSS and say selector margin top auto. And literally just says that takes as much margin as you can from the available space. So that's why it's pushing everything to the bottom. You'll be wondering why I didn't do it directly from the layout tab of the margin. You can use the pencil icon here as well. But unfortunately, the margin here is applied to an inner wrapper div rather than the outer wrapper. So it would not work in this situation. So now that we have that, let's maybe get rid of the gap. So on the parent container of the content, let's click on the parent container, the inner container, not the parent container. That's the one that's holding the content. 
we want to reduce the spacing so let's go to the layout tab and then i'll set the gap to maybe eight pixels and then i'll give it some padding so it doesn't stay too flush to the edge of the container so advanced tab let's go and choose maybe like a 1m and yeah so it's away from the edges so we can publish it then you can give the post title a link if you want to link the entire card i'll leave a link to my other video where i showed four different ways that you can get the entire card to be linked but this time i just want only the post title to be linked so use the dynamic tag and then we'll set it to post url now we can save and close but one thing you notice that at the moment it's not filling the entire height of the container so we have to use some custom css for that normally if we had more than one container so let's just click on the loop grid if we had more than one item per page and more than one column you see that there's the equal height option and when we toggle that it gives you equal height but if we have only one item per page and one column that option disappears so we'll have to force it ourselves and then we just go to the advanced tab then custom css and apply this custom css the link will be in the description below so you may not need to worry about it just adding the height of 100% to all the wrapper divs and then it gives you this full screen image one thing i forgot is the background color for the category label so let's go back and edit the template then we'll click on the label and then go under the advanced tab on the background choose the classic background and then the color we'll choose the dynamic tag and we use the term field under jet engine that's one benefit that jet engine gives us that we can directly reference the taxonomy so we we'll choose the taxonomy we want which is the categories and then the field will be a meta field and that's the field that we showed in the beginning which is label bg color and straight away we see it gets this background color at the moment it's spanning the entire width that's because we've set the direction to row and then the alignment is now stretching to the edge if we want this one only to have an alignment that goes to the start we can now go to that widget under the layout tab and then see align self say start and you see immediately it now makes it to fill just the width of the widget itself so now let's add some padding so that it doesn't look so squished i'll use an m say maybe 0 0.5 then let's unlink it and say maybe the top and bottom should be a bit smaller Yeah, and that's it. The first template is done. You can publish it and exit. And that's the first template done. For the second loop template, it should be quite straightforward. Let's go ahead and create the template. You notice from the example that all we have is an image and the content as well, similar to the first example. So we we'll just speed through it. We we'll just have an image and the content. The image can be about 30% and then the content is about maybe 70%. So that's what I'm going to be working with. So let's go back to our edit screen. And now we're just adding our featured image widget as well. And we'll add in the container for the content. Then within the container, we'll add in the heading widget. We'll add in our post title. Then the post info widget. And finally, we'll add in the excerpt. So now let's go ahead and make all of this thing look nice. But before we do that, like I mentioned for the first loop, 
let's rename it so we'll go to the settings and then this time we'll say mag order post loop template let's publish it and go back now i want it to fill the entire row so let's click on the loop grid set the columns to just a single column then the items per page you set it to three yeah now we have that so we can go back to continue our styling so let's publish it and then edit so we start with the layout let's go to the container and then we want it to be 30 percent by 60 percent so for that i'll just use the css grid is quite quicker then i'll set it to full width the columns use the pencil icon and say so that'll be 3 fr by 7 fr i don't want the outline and then for the rows i'll just use auto that's it done for the container finally like i did with the first one change the html tag to article save it now let's go to the image next for the image click on the wrench icon so we can add in a fallback image similar to the first one then in the style tab i'll set the width 100 percent the height the percentage 100 percent as well object fit i want it to be cover now i'll just rush through and style the rest of the content and then i'll see you when i get everything done okay now that that's done now let's go and reduce the spaces a bit so we'll start with the grid and then i'll just maybe make it like eight pixels then the container for the content let's reduce the spaces between all the elements so i'll just set that to maybe eight as well then like i said previously i like to make the title the first item so we'll just reorder it then click on the heading widget the advanced tab we we'll set the order to start and one thing we can do is remove the spaces so we'll go to the grid advanced tab and just remove the pattern it fills the entire space and we can now publish it and save and exit yeah you can see now we have our items let's reduce the space in a bit so the space between the items with the style tab maybe I just gap between rows or just make it maybe one m or one rem then we can save it and there we have it this is our first example but you notice one thing that the title is repeating this is Ducimus, and then there's Ducimus as well so to avoid having the repetition just click on the second loop go over to the content query and then exclude you would see something called offset just set the offset to one that means start from the second item and then you see that it's no longer having the same repeated title so we can publish it and that's our first template done now if you're looking for a more efficient approach let's move on to the second method this time we'll just use one loop grid and some custom css to achieve the same magazine layout while reducing the database queries right now with the first loop we see that we are querying the database twice for the same posts but if we use only one loop then we only query the database once so let's go ahead and add in our new loop grid widget again into a new section and then this time we just add the template so what we'll do is we'll start with the second template because that's the one that is repeating and then we'll add the first template as an alternate template because that's just only one time is being used so first we'll start with mag order then we we'll set the columns 
to 2, the number of items per page to 4. Then we say we want equal heights. Then the next step is that we want to apply an alternate template. That's the key bit here. So for the alternate template, let's go over to it. And now we choose the template we created for the first loop. So that's the same thing, mag. This time is a featured loop. And we say we want it to start as the first item on the grid. Uh, then that's it. So the final step now is to add in the custom CSS. So let's go back to the advanced tab, custom CSS. And we add this custom CSS. And straight away, we have the same, like the first example. And everything can be controlled from this one loop grid. So we'll go to the style tab. We can say we want everything to be one rem. So between the columns and between the rows, we want everything to be one rem. You see, we've gotten the same example, like the first one. And this one has that added advantage that we don't have to change the offsets. We don't have to use two loops. So the database query should be less and then it should be faster. So let's look at it in the front end. See, those are the two loops. So now, which method do you think is better? Are you loving the elemental loop grid? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you're interested in an in-depth tutorial, on the basics of Flexbox container, as well as the grid container in Elementor, I'll be happy to create those for you, but I will need to know if you're interested in it so I can put my time and effort into it. So before we go, please don't forget to like the video, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.